Let's talk about, uh, you talked about qualified to teach. Let's talk about a little bit about your military background and kind of where sure. that started and kind of your experience through that. Where it started. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Okay, so originally I was supposed to play football. Right. Um, I was supposed to go to Colorado State. And my dad was my coach for most of my life. I mean, he was a football coach and a track coach and just kind of, goes to without saying that he was a coach of mine. Mm -hmm. But he and I weren't always seeing eye to eye. We had a really rough phase of our relationship at those points in time. Mm -hmm. And um, he, there was times where I just felt like he was pushing and pushing and pushing. And I just got to the point where, you know, I was 18 and I'm smarter than everybody. And I was like, what's the farthest thing from fucking football, like, <laughs> fine. I was like, I'm going to go in the military. Let's go. Yeah, quit and this team, join the other one. Yeah, so <laughs> I was like, that's how it actually ended up, which is super not cool, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's not a great story to tell people. And So it just, it, w it was what it was, and I ended, it's turned out to be a great decision. Like, it's worked well for me. Yeah, I mean, let's, I'm going to back you up real quick. That's mm -hmm. probably how most people get into the military, well, if you listen to a lot of the people, they talk and on podcasts and shit, and they're like, oh, it was great. I wanted to serve my country, and yeah, sweet. It's not exactly the same as your story, but that's, I mean, your dad was a Marine, like you're a third-generation Marine, like, right? Yeah, yeah like, but my, me leaving to go to boot camp was me punching my steering wheel as hard as I could and yelling at him <laughs> because, you know, so it wasn't glamorous. It's not like you see in the uh, movies, like, you know. Something happens, you're like, yeah, I'm going to go serve. And, Everybody's you know, got a tear. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm not saying it was bad, right? Like, it wasn't, no. I wasn't angry when I went in. But my reasons for going were not because I, like, it was my life goal to be in the Navy. That wasn't my, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But it must have kind of become something like that when you were there for oh, 12 years. Oh, definitely. Over time, you know, after my first three or four years it really like became a part of what I wanted you know uh, more so than I thought yeah to be honest with you so you just walked into the recruiter's office for the navy or did you go talk to them all I talked you, to you didn't know I, I talked to the army the air force and the navy so in Tucson there was a little recruiting station on Broadway I think and it had, those three were like, the doors were like right next to each other. So I just kind of like, boop, 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 mm -hmm. like around the room. And then, mm -hmm. well, for, since I was about 15, my parents have taken me diving a lot. And I, and I had been diving in Sea of Cortez down in Gulf of Mexico area. And uh, in the military, diving is a job. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, fucking... Yeah, that's what I want to do. Why not? Right? Where, do, where yeah. do I sign? But then there was more to it, right? Then I got this ambition that, like, well, there's other people that dive also, but they have other jobs. Mm -hmm. Like, I originally went in. Uh, my plan was to go to Bud's to go to be a SEAL because everybody wanted to be a SEAL. Mm -hmm. But when I got to boot camp and I took the qual test, they asked me what program that I wanted to, why I was there, because I have this little paper you have to bring to them and they fill it out. And I put on it EOD, which is Explosive Ordnance Disposal. So I wanted to be Bomb Squad was originally what I went in to do. Well, I failed out of that. And I ended up in Virginia on a fucking aircraft carrier. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, that was not the way I wanted to go, <laughs> right? And for one, the special forces, uh, I don't know how you put it, like the brother, the camaraderie of the guys and the people in the community of special forces is not the same world as regular Navy, regular Army. Right. And it was very selfish. It was, oh, like, if you can't do anything for me, I'm not doing shit for you. Um, and on top of all that, I was in Virginia, which I can't stand, Virginia. <laughs> and I was just having a really hard time. So actually, after my first years, I got out of the military in 2000. And I went back to Tucson for 
until September 11th happened. And I got a letter in the mail about, because I was still on reserves. And I got pulled back in to the military. And I just happened to, when I was back getting my uniforms and my whatever, my medical records and stuff, I ran into an old master chief of mine that knew how much I hated the military. And he was like, well, weren't you, didn't you try to go to be EOD and diving? He's like, if I can get you in something like that, would you be interested? I was like, well, fucking duh. (laughs) And he's like, well, just come back to my office tonight after dinner. And I was like, all right, like whatever. I'm not expecting shit. And I went back that night and he's like, you want to go to dive school? For t- hard hat diving, for two Charlie diving. If you, it's a uh, man of honor. You ever seen that movie? Yeah. Like the hard hat diving. Yeah. That's what, yeah. Okay. He's like, if you ever, if you want to do that, be in Virginia in two days, at this uh, at Mudsu Two, which is like a mobile diving and salvage unit. And he said, you're going to be a mud puppy for six months. So all that means is you're like a. You have no responsibilities. You just get your ass kicked 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day. Uh And you study and you work out. And that's, you get ready for school, right? So you're preparing to go to dive school or whatever. Okay. And that's it. Like your whole life and existence is working out and getting your ass kicked and studying, which was cool. (laughs) But I was in Virginia and I was back in Virginia and I didn't like that. But I was only there for six months, and then after that, I went to dive school and graduated, and ended up in San Diego. And yeah, yeah, and that part. Once I was in the that community, oh shit, I'd love to stay there. Mm-hmm. Got a lot better. Oh yeah. <clears throat> what was it like getting the letter calling you back in when you opened that piece of mail up? That was actually kind of a love hate kind of thing. I really didn't want to go. Like I dodged the. <laughs> I dodged them a few times till they showed up to my parents' house, but <laughs> um, I was installing car stereos at Best Buy, mm-hmm. and I remember watching September 11th when that happened. On the big in Best Buy, they have like nine giant TVs that are one big screen, and that's what it was on. And we sat there, and I watched that, and I was like, I got this, f- you know, that feeling, and I was like, fuck going back i well i wanted to like i want to go back but before that that's why like going in the military wasn't a the the spirit that americans had after september 11th is not the same as before right so now i'm like oh well shit if i could go back in maybe that's a good idea but then i was like i remembered how shitty it was in virginia and i didn't want to be on a boat and yeah, and I didn't have any qualifications to make me not do that. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was kind of hesitant, but kind of wanted to. And it just so happened I fell under that one master chief that sent me to be a mud puppy and a diver, and like that was a coin flip. Yeah. And then so. you, you did eight years of that. Yeah, yeah. But the good news was that when I when I reenlisted at dive school after I graduated and I got my big bonus. They told me that because they brought me back in the military, the time that I was out counted as active duty. So I got the full, all the way back to 96 when I went in. So I got the full 12 years. Wow. So that was, that worked. That was a benefit. Yeah, that's good. And then from San Diego, when did you get deployed? San Diego wasn't a deployable unit. What it was, I was a deep submergence unit. And we did submarine rescue and deep submergence, right? So we were basically on call 24-7. In case a submarine sinks, we go save the dudes or whatever. And uh, so we don't deploy, really. Like, we would go do exercises around the world. We'd go to Korea and go to Italy and stuff. But we didn't deploy like other people because we were a rescue asset. Mm -hmm. So... I stayed in San Diego until, what was that, then in 2006. And went back to dive school, went to first class dive school, and then went to Hawaii for a SEAL delivery team. What does that mean, SEAL delivery team? Uh, it's just a, it's a mini sub, well, the team itself consists of a lot of different things, a lot of different programs. Mm-hmm. 
but they're just the actual SDV unit is a mini sub that gets out of that's carried on the back of a big submarine and it gets out and goes and does missions and stuff that the frogs take. Interesting. And you're the driver. No, they're the driver. They're it's a it's a wet sub, so it's flooded, and they're. So you were one of the Navy SEALs. We were one of the divers. No, I was not a SEAL. Oh, yeah. You, came, I, you came out and helped them. Yeah, we launch and recover the vehicle and gotcha. and all of that, and we maintain the shelter and, and all of that stuff. But um, there's also other programs there, though. They have an ASDS thing, which is a much larger submarine. Um, yeah, there's. Wild. I've done some weird shit. How, how often are submarines sinking and you have to go? Not risk? very often. Okay. However, <laughs> that being said, uh, in 2005, there was a Russian submarine that was trapped on the bottom. And I was one of the guys that went over there for that. There was four of divers, four of us that went over there. Um, and I was on the sub and met the minister of defense in Russia and all that crap. Really? It was a, yeah. the, the little So you guys sub, saved like, a Russian sub? Yeah, there, it was us and the Brits. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a mini sub that was trapped on the bottom, and they said it was for exploration and research or whatever the fuck. It was yeah. not. Okay. But <laughs> it was caught on the bottom, right? Yeah. And they, one of their batteries was failing, and they were dying. There were seven dudes in the sub. It's called the Priz. So us and the Brits went over there, and the Brits had this ROV, this unmanned vehicle with this big cable cutter. Cause that's what it was caught on uh-huh. and it went down there and it cut the cable and we were there to make sure like if it got tangled or anything, divers could do- go down and get it we out. could do it that way. Yeah. Um, but it ended up working and you know, we saved them and never got to meet those fucking guys though. The Russians would never let us meet them. Of course. They're like, no, they're good now. Thanks guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go home. yeah. yeah. All's good. Nothing to see, see here. Yeah. The uh, damn Americans. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got a lot of shit because they had a submarine sink before that, where every, the Kursk, where everybody died, and they got a lot of shit for not asking for help. Oh. So that's why, like, as soon as that happened, everybody got the call. Yeah. I think the Australians got the call too, but it was so far away they couldn't. It was Arctic Circle in, like, eastern Russia and wow. Kamchatka. Yeah. Water was, was pretty cold. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're in a hard hat, that's the big, the bigger one. I'm not thinking like a scuba mask, right? There's a lot of different diving platforms. Okay. That but in cold dove. water. Well, cold water we use. There's a lot of different ones that we use for that too. But Mark Twenty One, it's it's yellow, has a little window and has some valves on the side, has a gold handle on the, or a brass handle. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. those are the ones they don't use the old. With Four. the three hundred pound suit, they yeah. don't do that anymore. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hook a dumbbell to your foot. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you can swim. I mean, I'm just picturing you just floating down in the suit, down to the submarine, like just pitch black. <laughs> no, 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 not in that one. We were in dry suits and just regular Mark Twenties, which is like a face okay. covering thing where we can still communicate. But crazy, yeah. 